Justice Roberts' decision is. I mean, he, he in effect has said to the country, the President of the United States lied to all of us, lied consistently, uh, and that he, the Chief Justice, has decided that the President's argument, which is that it's under the Commerce Clause, is false. As you know, uh, the Justice has agreed that, the, that they did not have the power to impose mandates under the uh, Commerce Clause. So the Justice has now said, however, uh, I will accept that this is a tax, even though the president said aggressively again and again and again it's not a tax. So it's really constitutional for reasons that require us to recognize that the president of the United States was profoundly wrong. Yeah, isn't uh, that, isn't that it's amazing? a very strange position to be in. It, it almost seemed like he gave them an answer. And, and it was interesting in the dissent by Scalia and Thomas and, and Alito and Kennedy, as, as they pointed out here, it should be shut, you know, this is the argument they made, this is the law they passed, they say it's a penalty, they didn't say it was a tax, they point out in the law where the distinctions between a tax and a penalty are, and then they say, therefore, it, at this point, this discussion should be over. And, and, but in the case of the Chief Justice, he went out there and came up with a reason for the White House. Now, I think some people are, are so clever that they're not very smart. And I think this is one of those decisions. Now, what, what, what Justice Roberts has done is he has put the burden back on the American people to make a decision. This is the largest tax increase in history. It is an enormous extension of the federal government. It cuts $500 billion out of Medicare. It is a clearly unworkable and undesirable bill. The Supreme Court will not rescue us from Obama. We have to rescue ourselves, and I suspect that will make this the largest single issue in the fall campaign. You know, it's funny. That was the most interesting part of the decision that, um, that was written by the Chief Justice Roberts in this case. When he actually said, members of this court are vested with the authority to interpret the law, we possess neither the expertise nor the prerogative. Uh, to make policy judgments, those decisions are entrusted to our nation's elected leaders who can be thrown out of office if the people disagree with them. It is not our job to protect the people from the consequences of their political choices. It almost seemed to me, and maybe I'm reading into it, that he was saying, you decide. This is a choice election. Well, I think that is what he's done. I mean, what, what, yeah, And I think maybe part of it was his own fear that if they came out with a muddled solution which repealed the mandate but didn't repeal the rest of the bill, that the court itself would be in the middle of this fight. Uh, and now they've laid it square on the American people, and they've laid it, frankly, square on the Republican Party. We have to win control of the Senate. We have to win the presidency. We have to increase our votes in the House. Uh, and I think that uh, it, it virtually guarantees that the two parallel issues all fall are going to be uh, how do we repeal Obamacare and how bad is the economy? And, of course, the very nature of Obamacare makes the economy worse. I mean, you, we just guaranteed that small businesses will not hire anybody uh, between now and Election Day. You know, but with 131 days to go, um, I'm looking at this that this is probably politically a good thing for Governor Romney. Because it just it, this, more than any one issue, will highlight the differences in two two competing governing philosophies. This was This is about as big a choice election... Well, it has to be the biggest in my lifetime, and that includes Reagan versus Carter, in my mind. I think that's right. I think this is the biggest choice since 1860, and I think that it is the most important election in many ways since 1860. And I think your, your point's exactly right. If you look at what Governor Romney has said today, and he's been pretty consistent about this, uh, he does not believe this bill is workable. Uh, he believes it is very destructive. He believes it has to be repealed. Uh, as he put it, he's committed on day one to moving towards repeal. Uh, the difference between Romney and Obama could be more vivid. Uh, and it poses a real problem, I think, for Obama, because it, it, it slows the election choice down to very big, very simple points. Uh, it's clear who Obama is and what he wants to do. It's clear that Romney wants to go in a dramatically different direction. Now, that's a real choice. Yeah. Is how much how much will the issue of the president's credibility be um, when it comes down to the issue uh, in his case of telling the American people and defending as he did as we played often today that this is not a tax it's not a tax it's not a tax and and that is exactly what the Supreme Court said it was a tax. Well, I tweeted this afternoon um, the appearance of the president 
uh, with George Stephanopoulos, where I think seven times in a row he says this is not a tax. And, and Stephanopoulos reads to him from the dictionary at one point. Yeah, I got and that. I Let me play it again. Because uh, obviously what, what Justice Roberts has said is, you know, the president is not right. This is a tax. Uh, and so in a bizarre way, the president upheld the Obamacare by the worst possible argument for Obama. Yeah, let me play that again, because I think this is really key to the president's credibility. And it, and it goes to a whole variety. I mean, the president said he couldn't change the immigration law, didn't have the constitutional authority, and he went ahead and did it. You know, the president is on record as saying that, that he, it's not red America, blue America. He's going to bring the country together, unite the country, change the tone, bring back civility, and, and we know where that has taken us. He said he'd cut the deficit in half. He said he'd get rid of lobbyists. He said he'd eliminate earmarks. There are a lot of real specific issues where the president, you know, basically goes with the political feeling of the day and not necessarily a promise that he's made. And, and here's one case in point based on today's decision. Tax, a charge usually of money imposed by authority on persons or property for public purposes. George, the fact that you looked up Merriam's dictionary, that the definition of tax increase indicates to me that you're stretching a little bit right now. Otherwise, you wouldn't have gone to the dictionary to check on the definition. Well, no. I mean, what, if what you're saying I is... I wanted to check for myself, but your critics say it is a tax increase. Uh, my critics say everything's a tax increase. My critics say that I'm taking over uh, every sector of the economy. You know that. Uh, look, we can have a legitimate debate about whether or not we're going to have an individual mandate or not. But, but you reject that it's a tax I increase. I absolutely reject that notion. Well, he just rejects the notion, but that's what the Supreme Court said it was today. And so how does that impact his credibility? Because i got to assume there's going to be ads showing that running probably by tonight. Well, you would certainly hope so. I, I certainly hope that the Romney organization and every other group that's concerned is going to find every single quote, because it's not just with Stephanopoulos, where Obama said this was not a tax increase. And, of course, it poses... Uh, uh, an interesting thought, which is maybe the president should call for the repeal of Obamacare, since its only constitutionality is something he said it wasn't. Yeah, that, that's pretty fascinating. All right, well, I know you're, you're out there in uh, Italy. How's your trip? Well, it's interesting. You know, this is an amazing time to be in Europe, because whatever we think our problems are, you ought to see the problems they've got. I mean, Spain is in a very deep recession, 25% uh, unemployment. Greece is essentially a basket case. Uh, the systems are not working, uh, and I think that there's there's real problems coming in Europe this summer uh, that that are going to have some significant impact on our election and on, on our. I mean, so, it's an extraordinary time to be here and to see what's going on. You know, what's more extraordinary is that as as Europe now is reeling from from decades of bad redistributive policies, we're adopting them here in America. I mean, that is that is almost. It seems like we can't even learn the lessons that the, from, from the mistakes that they've made and, and learn the lessons that uh, they are now learning the hard way. Well, that's exactly what I mean. Barack Obama represents a commitment to doing to America what the left has done to Europe, and yet we have evidence, and everybody who's listening to us today is going to see more and more evidence over the next few weeks. This is not working. A big, expensive, tax-heavy welfare state with centralized bureaucrats simply doesn't work. And the result has been for Europe a nightmare of costs uh, and I think a very, very real crisis for the entire Eurozone. All right, uh, Mr. Speaker, I know how busy you are and the time difference, and uh, thanks for taking time out of your very busy day and, uh, to, be to be with this us. Is a very important, this is a very important day, Sean, and what you're bringing up is very, very important for the whole country. All right, appreciate it, uh, Mr. Speaker. And uh, with